What's going on guys, Lomax here and welcome to another Battleborn character guide. This one will be featuring Isaac. Isaac, the LLC defender, is a foul-mouthed rogue AI who believes human life is worthless. He brings a bit of tankiness to the game along with a very high damage potential at the cost of limited mobility. Regardless, he is a threat that must be accounted for, so let's see how threatening he really is. We're going to start with his weapon, Charge Cannon, because it's important to know how it works before we get into his passive. Holding down the trigger for your primary is going to cause his weapon to fire shot, and once it is fully charged, letting go of the trigger is going to release a stronger shot which deals more damage. You want to release the shot as soon as the cannon is charged, then repeat to maximize your damage. Also note that while you are charging your cannon, your movement speed will be decreased. His quote-unquote talent is his secondary attack, Energy Aegis. This will allow Isaac to raise a shield that blocks up to 2,000 incoming damage, making him quite tanky. While holding the shield, you cannot fire your charge cannon. Now, his passive overcharge will allow his skills to become empowered with an overcharge effect. While your charge cannon is fully charged, you can activate a skill and give it an overcharge, consuming the shot, meaning it will not fire. We'll go over what each skill will do when overcharged. His first skill, Rotating Wards, is going to summon protective wards around him for 8 seconds that break after taking a certain amount of damage. Each blocks damage from enemy fire. The overcharged effect will increase the amount of damage each ward can take before breaking. This skill, along with Energy Aegis, can make Isaac really tanky and hard to bring down. But he is very vulnerable when both are down. His second skill, Plasma Dash, is going to allow Isaac to dash to a target location, dealing damage to nearby enemies. The overcharged effect will add bonus damage to the dash. Like other dashes in the game, this is your gap closer or escape. You can also use the skill to climb terrain, which can save your life in certain situations. His ultimate, Omega Strike, is going to make Isaac deploy two different types of turrets that will replace his primary and secondary attacks. One turret will fire shots quickly and will deal less damage, while the other will fire slowly, but deal more damage. The overcharged effect here will provide Isaac with an overshield upon activation of Omega Strike. Your movement speed will be greatly reduced in this state, but you will deal a tremendous amount of damage, especially in PvE where you can stay in your ultimate longer as it is more safe. Let's get into Isaac's Helix Tree now. At level 1, we'll have a choice between Watchful Wards and Crushing Those Shields. Watchful Wards is going to reduce Isaac's shield recharge delay depending on how many wards are up. Each ward will provide about 3 tenths of a second of shield recharge delay. This is a great defensive skill as you can pop your wards if your shield is down to bring it back up faster. Crushing those shields is going to provide shield penetration for Plasma Dash. Now, Plasma Dash doesn't deal a whole lot of damage to begin with, and you're not using it to do damage. You should be using it for the mobility. I'd pass on this skill and take Watchful Wards here instead. At level 2, we're going to get two buffs to Rotating Wards. You dropped these, and this might sting. You dropped these is going to allow Rotating Wards to reflect bullets. It will not work against melee characters, so you want to take this skill when the enemy team has ranged characters. Reflected bullets can and will do damage to their shooters if they are hit by them, so this works in your favor. This Might Sting is going to change the overcharged effect of rotating wards. Instead of wards that block inbound damage, you will get plasma charges that will deal damage on contact with enemies. This will be good to use against melee enemies if you get jumped on, but you will lose the protection from any enemy fire that might come in, so just be sure to use this skill carefully. Out of the two skills here, I tend to go with you drop these even with the enemy team being composed of melee characters, because having the overcharged wards is still nice, and you lose out on those if you choose the plasma charges. At level 3, we're going to get Not Dying Today, which is going to buff Isaac's shield, and Charging on the Go, which is going to buff Charge Cannon. Not Dying Today is going to increase Isaac's shield strength by a flat 80%, so you'll have nearly double your starting shield capacity, which will make you able to tank a little more damage. Charging on the go is going to remove the slow that Isaac receives while he charges Charge Cannon. This will obviously give you more mobility, putting you at your normal walking speed. 
This will make it a lot easier to chase enemies while firing and to kite enemies as well as you will not be hindered by the slow speed. You can't really go wrong with either skill at this level as they're both pretty good. At level 4, we're going to get two buffs to Plasma Dash. Hold it right there and line up, fellas. Hold it right there is going to add a two second stun to enemies hit by Plasma Dash. This is a huge power spike for Isaac in PvP. It gives you a stun that is essentially a skill shot, but has a wide and long area of effect. Definitely take this skill in PvP. In PvE, it can't hurt you, but the stunning isn't that necessary. Lineup Fellas is going to cause every subsequent enemy after the first enemy to take bonus damage from Plasma Dash. This skill isn't that great in PvP and is just flat out outclassed by the stun. In PvP, there's some use for it if you can line up a few minions, but that's about it. Go with the stun at this level, you'll thank me later. At level 5, we're going to get two skills buffing overcharge. I'm concentrating and in a big rush. I'm concentrating is going to cause Isaac's shield to regenerate faster while charge cannon is overcharged. With not dying today, this can be really nice, as your larger shield capacity will now regenerate faster when you overcharge your cannon. In a big rush will provide Isaac with a 50% movement speed increase while overcharged. This along with charging on the go will make you able to move even faster while overcharged. At this level you should take the first skill if you're looking for tankiness and the second if you're looking for mobility. It'd be a good idea to pick the skill that complements your level 3 choice as well. At level 6 our next two skills will be Burly or Wards which will buff rotating wards, no surprise there and Let's Hug It Out, which will buff Plasma Dash. Earlier Wards is going to increase Rotating Wards block strength, doubling the normal non-overcharged version. Again, this will be really nice to have if you have ranged enemies in the other team because it will be even harder for them to break through your wards and damage you. It won't be useful against melee characters, so just take a look at who or what you are facing as this choice will be situational. Let's Hug It Out is going to reduce the cooldown time of Plasma Dash by 20%. This is a good skill no matter what the enemy team comp is, as this means more stuns if you decide to take that skill at level 4, which again, I highly recommend. At level 7, we'll have a choice between Bring It On, which will buff Energy Aegis, and Quick Charge, which will buff Charge Cannon. Bring It On is going to double the damage that Energy Aegis can block. I myself find I don't use Isaac's shield too often with my playstyle. I'm usually constantly firing at my enemies with charge cannon, but this certainly has its use. Energy Aegis can already block a ton of damage without this, so with this it becomes very strong. Quick Charge is going to decrease the time needed to charge up charge cannon. This is my preferred option here as you'll be able to fire overcharge shots more often. The skill you choose at this level is again going to depend on your playstyle and the general flow of the game. At level 8, we'll get two buffs to rotating wards. Hard work and wards, and waste not, want not. Hard work and wards is going to increase the duration of rotating wards by 6 seconds. The skill nearly doubles the duration of your wards and should ensure that they won't go down in combat unless they are shot and destroyed. Waste not, want not is going to reduce the cooldown of rotating wards for every ward that is still active at the time of their expiration. I wouldn't recommend this skill if your wards continuously get destroyed in combat, but otherwise it is a good one to have. Each ward remaining will give you a 10% cooldown reduction. Both skills are viable here, and again, your choice should depend on the flow of the game. At level 9, we'll get two buffs to Plasma Dash. Can't run for me, and dodge this. Can't run for me is going to increase the speed and maximum range of Plasma Dash. I prefer this skill in PvP as now it will be easier to land stuns on people because of the increased speed. The range will make it easier to hit people as well from a farther distance, so definitely go with this in PvP. Plus, if you do need to escape, you can travel farther and more quickly. Dodge this is going to increase the area of effect of Plasma Dash. This skill will be better suited for PvE as you can cover a wider area with your dash, which will make it easier to do damage to large groups of enemies. Finally, at level 10, we'll get Isaac's last two upgrades, which will be for Omega Strike. They are Shields Up and It's Raining Death. Shields Up is going to deploy Energy Aegis upon the use of Omega Strike, protecting you from incoming frontal damage. If it goes down, it will redeploy after 6 seconds. 
This skill will make you very tanky, which is nice because you're going to be vulnerable while in your turret form with the slower movement speed. It would be ideal to keep your enemies in front of you and pay attention to any that try and hit you from the backside, but as long as you can kill whatever is trying to kill you before they kill you, it shouldn't be an issue. It's raining death while Omega Strike is active. We'll launch missiles whenever an enemy is hit with a cannon shot. This will add a good deal to I-6 DPS, and I certainly recommend taking this skill in PvE. In PvP, again, it's going to be a toss-up on whether you want to prioritize defense or damage. So choose according to your situation. That's going to do it for Isaac, guys. As you can see, a lot of his Helix choices will depend on the way you want to play him. You can opt for a tankier build, opt for more damage, or mix and match to get a hybrid of both. As always, guys, feel free to rate and or comment down below if you have anything you wish to add or share. Feel free to subscribe as well if you are interested in seeing future videos, and I'll catch you all next time.